So that's my son, Cameron Thomas Dingle. Born in 2000 uh, and probably my greatest accomplishment on most days. Uh, but before Cameron, I need to sort of catch you up and tell you a little bit more about me. <sighs> Buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Um, in 1998, in the rural south of the United States, I married the love of my life, who happened to be Black. I know nowadays that doesn't feel like much, but let me tell you, it was a lot. The, that day, my father told me that he was worried how my children would survive in this world. And at the time, I was worried it was well, but being young and idealistic, I knew myself and my partner could handle anything together because after all, love conquered all. And then my son was born. And when he was born, it was a very light skinned tone. <laughs> my best friend, who uh, happens to be a six foot three, 350 pound black man, uh, he just looked and looked and uh, laughed. And he told me, don't worry, Carla, he just needs time to darken up that he hadn't been in the oven long enough. Uh, at first, I didn't know what to say. Then he laughed, so I laughed, and we laughed together, and we laughed and laughed. And then we watched. <laughs> we watched him change, and we commented over how the first 12 months of my son's life, that he looked like a different child from a different ethnicity every six weeks. My son, Cameron, was absolutely a beautiful baby. Now, I know. I am biased, but truthfully, everyone stopped to tell me how beautiful he was. And it's as they stopped that everything sort of started to come into focus. Things became very clear that the journey I would be on as the white mother of a black child had just begun. And I say black because even though my son is bi biracial, excuse me, biracial, he's always identified himself as black. After all, that's what he saw in the mirror. And that's how everyone has treated him his entire life. I remember the first time I felt the sting of race when we were out in public. My son was about six years old and we were at a grocery store um, and he was being so well behaved and I worked at a children's clothing store. So when I say this child looked like an angel, truly, truly did. And this lovely woman just stopped me uh, and just told me how beautiful he was and was gushing over him, adjusted his little hat. I mean, it's the South in the early 2000s and uh, we were having a lovely conversation. And then I was stunned. She asked me where he, my son was adopted from. It felt like 10 minutes before I responded, but I'm sure it was something like 10 seconds. And I just quietly said, he's mine. She looked at me, she looked at him. And she just responded with a quick nod of her head. And I could hear it in my mind, of course he is, of course he is. And then we walked away. But there was this tone that lingered. And I knew in that moment that I chose a path where I'd never quite feel like I fit in. More importantly, I worried my son would never feel like he fit in. Things like this happened often to me. I just handled them and moved on. It's what you do, right? You nod politely in the South, thank people, and you move on. 
But the first time it became something I couldn't ignore was when we were on vacation. Uh, my husband and I took a vacation with my parents and his husband's parents on a cruise ship. It was a big deal. Uh, we spent probably every last penny we had to treat the whole family. And we were having an incredible, incredible vacation. One of the stops uh, is a private island that the cruise line owns. Uh, so uh, only the passengers can go and the staff and you can do everything from riding like beach motorcycles and laying out in the sun to water sliding and all of this stuff. Um, and it was just a beautiful, fun day. I remember my son laughing and just having an incredible time. And then it was time to get back on the ship. And this is the early 2000s, 2005, 2006, I can't remember the exact date, uh, but it's before pastors were required to have passports and way before kids were required to have passports. So when it was time to go back on the ship, there was a line at the, at the dock and uh, we all sort of got in line and my husband was chatting as he does uh, with my mother-in-law and my father. And they sort of ended up in a different piece of the boarding line, quite a ways behind us. So it was just me, my mother, and my son as we headed up the gangplank, only to be stopped and pulled aside by security. A security officer began to question my son directly and asked who his parents were and where his parents were. Uh, at age five, he was so confused. He looked directly in my eyes and said nothing. So they asked him again. He started to cry. He'd never been questioned by someone like this. <sighs> After I spent some time sort of identifying myself and trying to make it was clear to the officer that I was his mother, there was still uncertainty in the eyes. He looked at me in a way that I don't know that I'll ever forget. <sighs> it's as if he thought I had taken a child from the island that I was kidnapping him. As a matter of fact, I'm convinced that they did think that. By this time, tears were rolling down my eyes. My mother had kept her mouth quiet, which was literally a miracle because I think she didn't even know what to say. By this time, the rest of our party had caught up with us and at the sight of my husband, my son just ran straight into his arms. Security officer looked at me, nodded, gestured with his hand, and sent us on our way. I was in shock, I'm pretty sure as I walked on, I headed to my stateroom sat in the bed and I cried for hours. Didn't make it to dinner that night because for the first time I saw the pain being black was for my son and how having a white mom didn't make life easier but made life harder. There are so many more instances of things that have happened. But I don't think anything was more alarming than 2020. I feared for my life in a way that I had never had to fear for him before. We live in a, a nice area. We raised our son to be a great man, to be respectful and honest. My father was right to worry about how my son would survive in this world. In the United States, black men are hunted down by civilians and police officers just for walking down the street. When the pandemic hit, my son came home from university. 
and I'm embarrassed to admit the security of having him asleep downstairs every night was the only thing that got me through. You see, I've had conversations with my son his whole life. Like, don't leave the house without identification. Don't drive your car into a nice neighborhood at night. Don't be confrontational to anyone ever. But it doesn't matter. You can be jogging down the street and shot because you're black. And as a mother, I worry every time he leaves the house. Judge me if you want. It's nothing compared to the judgment that he gets every day.